This is the 1N34A diode and it's the detector in a crystal radio circuit. And there's a lot of people telling me that they're finding it hard to, to get a genuine one. And yeah, that's true. I did a quick search the other day and more than nine out of 10 were fakes. They are just glass diodes and people passing them off as the 1N34A. Some, I saw one guy selling, they look like genuine ones, but they were, I think $20 a pop, which is kind of crazy considering I used to buy them for, you know, tens of cents. But uh, whether you're having trouble finding a, a genuine diode or whether you want to be a crystal radio purist and kind of go back to the way things were, uh, I've been working on something that might help you out. Let's take a look at that. This is a cat whisker detector. And what you do is you put a piece of mineral in here and they usually use galena. Uh, however, I have found that uh, other things work as well. I've been testing a few things. I built this because my tests were, I was trying to do it by hand and you just can't hold stuff still enough. So I put this together. Yes, this is 3D printed, but if you don't have a 3D printer, you can actually make most of this mechanism by just taking a piece of brass and folding it into a U shape. Um, but this is the well where you put the mineral and Right now I am in the process of sizing this up because my chunk of mineral is too big. This is a piece of iron pyrite, but it has some galena associated with it. My first radio used a galena detector and I tried the iron pyrite and it seems to work okay. And the fact that this is kind of a two for one, it has both the galena and the iron pyrite makes it uh, interesting to mess with. So let's take a look at this thing and see what's going on and how you can make your own. Of course, I have put the design out there on Thingiverse. I'll put the links below. I'm also working on some different size models of this. Uh, this one is too small to put in this big chunk of, of iron pyrite. Uh, so I, yeah, I started out small. The original detectors, you got a little cup of, I don't, I'm not quite sure what it was, uh, steel maybe. They filled it with lead and then they poked a piece of, of either iron pyrite or galena inside of that and kind of soldered it in place. And then you would screw the screws in to hold it down. And then you would have this cat's whisker and you would touch it and find a place on the mineral that was acting like a diode for you. Uh, so let's uh, get even closer in on this and I can show you the construction. Let's start on this end and just work our way back. This is the sample well and we put our mineral in here. And as you can see, this is just too big for this. So again, I'm working on a bigger model. We have some holders, so this should pinch the sample in place. And then we have our cat's whisker spring, which is just a spring that I've stretched out on the end and it's got a pointy, like a needle sharp point on the end of it. Uh, let's see. Okay. We've got our shaft. Now you say, okay, I don't have stainless steel shaft, but if you happen to have an old uh, CD-ROM drive, then uh, that's where I got this. So that's a nice substitute for, for that. Also the spring, if you want one that looks like the original, like that, you can pull those out of, this is a, uh, a wire nut for electrical use. And down inside there is the spring. This is out of a, this is too big, but the one down in there would be just fine. And you can wrap that around there and untwist it as needed to give you the point. Okay, back to the shaft. Shaft goes through the ball. Inside the ball is, I wanted, I wanted this to move in and out. So I need a contact inside the ball. And what I ended up doing was poking steel wool through the hole in here, packing it in there, and then pushing the rod through there. And of course the stainless steel acts like thousands of little contact points and uh, for the electricity. And that works just fine. Let's see, back here on this end is a wooden knob. And that is of course to keep your fingers out of the electrical circuit. On this side, there's not much of anything. And on this side is a brass plate, which acts as our spring to hold the ball in tension. Uh, next models are not gonna have this hole because aligning this hole with the hole on this side is almost impossible. And the hole over here is a well that's deep enough that it secures the ball nicely. Uh, bottom side is, uh, the brass comes through here and then there's two hold down holes. And I think, 
that's about we've covered just about everything so yeah um, again this is already available on the internet I'm working on a bigger version and uh, I'll keep making improvements and putting them out there as I do it okay well that was it for now uh, if you uh, are having trouble finding uh, the 1N34 A diode this may be a good substitute or again if you're just a purist and you want to do it like they did in the olden days uh, there you are okay hope you found that useful and interesting in your DIY crystal radio experimentation